The law of attraction states that like attracts like, but I never thought it would go this far. This is a drop of my blood, and surprisingly, McCormick red food coloring looks exactly the same as a drop of blood. So, it's attracted to it? What? Today I'm going to show you why food coloring is not only attracted to my blood, but it's attracted to food. And when you put a bunch of drops of food coloring together, they sense each other, move and react as if alive, locked in a continual dance of attraction and escape. This is a video about the mystery of attractive liquids. In 2009, an undergraduate at the University of Wisconsin was doing an experiment where he dropped some drops of food coloring onto a sterile glass slide. To his astonishment, the drops seemed to come alive. They began moving on their own and interacting with each other. Had he just discovered a new form of life? He studied this phenomenon on his own until later joining the PhD program at Stanford, where he and his team finally got to the bottom of what was going on. They found that these droplets mimicked living cells and could even self-sort. In this video, I'm gonna show you how this works and even show exactly what to do to mimic this experiment at home for yourself. The reason this happens with food coloring specifically is because of a special ingredient called propylene glycol. This is a drop of water and this is a drop of propylene glycol. When I put each of these liquids on clean glass slides, they spread out almost completely. But something interesting happens when we combine the two drops into one drop. They don't spread out as well. So if we look at the drop height versus the percent of propylene glycol, we get a curve that looks like this. For some reason, when we mix the drops in almost any ratio, the drops get an edge to them that puff up a bit. The reason this happens is due to one of my favorite phenomena in physics called the Marangoni effect. Near the edges of the drop, you get higher evaporation rates than at the center. And because water evaporates hundreds of times faster than propylene glycol, that means that the edges of the drop have higher concentrations than the center. And since water has a higher surface tension than propylene glycol, it pulls the propylene glycol up into the center. So there's continual flow from the edges of the drop towards the center of the drop. This keeps the drop perked up a bit. So when the evaporation of water is uniform around the edges, the drop just sits there. But then something magical happens when the evaporation of water from the drop isn't uniform. It can move. For example, if I place another drop of the same mixture of propylene glycol and water near each other, the water from each of the drops starts to evaporate. But notice how in the middle of the two drops, the evaporated water builds up more. So there's a higher relative humidity in between the drops than on the other side of the drops. Water doesn't evaporate as fast when there's a higher humidity in the air. So that means on the outside of the drop, there's a higher concentration of propylene glycol due to the faster evaporation of water on that side. So the surface tension gradient is no longer uniform and the flow goes from low surface tension to high surface tension. So that means each drop flows toward the other. This is amazing. They're literally following the vapor trail of each other. They sniff out the water vapor in the air. So that means if I just put something that has water on it, the propylene glycol drop can sniff it out and find where it is and follow it. It's like the drop is attracted to anything with water on it, even my finger. Now you can understand that there was nothing special about it being attracted to my blood or the apple. It was just that both of them had water in it. So when two drops have the same concentration, they move towards each other and merge. But something even stranger happens if the drops have different concentrations of propylene glycol. If the drops are different, they're still attracted to each other, but once they come close to each other, the propylene glycol-rich drop attacks the water-rich drop and drives it away. Really, the water drop is pulling the propylene glycol-rich drop. If I make a path for the drops, you can see that it just drives it around and around in a circle. This can even go uphill against gravity. The two drops pushing each other is basically the same mechanism that's causing either drop to move in the first place. The flow goes from low surface tension, high propylene glycol areas to high surface tension, high water areas. What's really neat about this is that the liquids can even self-sort. But before we continue, I wanna thank the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. 
To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via messaging, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist in the app or online anytime and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. And what's nice is if your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you'd expect from in-office therapy, but with more scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash action lab, or just click the link in the description. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. If I arrange the liquid so that they go from high concentration of propylene glycol to low concentration, then whatever concentration of drop I roll down this incline, it will find its corresponding concentration bin. This is because the higher water concentration drops get repelled until they find their same concentration. This is so cool. So if you wanna try this at home, it's actually not that hard to do but you have to be very specific with how you set it up. First, you need very clean glass or it won't work. The easiest thing to do is order some microscope slides from Amazon, but you can probably use any flat sheet of glass that's really clean. Then you need to heat it up and burn off any organics that are on the glass. This will help the drops not get pinned in place. So you can hold it in a flame like a Bunsen burner for about 20 to 30 seconds. Then you need your propylene glycol. Now you can order this online as well, but you can also get a solution of it from your grocery store. Most food colorings have propylene glycol as the main ingredient, but you have to make sure there aren't a bunch of other ingredients. For example, I tried this with this cheap brand that has a ton of other stuff in it and it didn't work at all. But this McCormick food coloring works great because it's just water and propylene glycol. So you can use this and just put tiny drops on the glass slide and they'll start moving around. And also you can use a Sharpie to make boundaries for the drops. The Sharpie's hydrophobic so it repels the drops enough to form a barrier. This is so fun. So you can make little racetracks for the drops. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.